afternoon, everybody. Um, I just like to welcome you to the health show, the uh, family health show. Uh, this is a program that we do every week at 3 p.m. And we have many people joining us from many, many different places. Um, we just want to thank you so much uh, for what you're doing. Um, as I say, we have uh, loads of people joining us. Um, my name is Edgar, and my co-host is... My name is Jonathan um, Curlew, and I'll be um, assisting Edgar. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, it's nice to see you this afternoon. Um, it's nice and sunny outside. Um, have you been for a walk, Jonathan? Not today, Edgar. No, unfortunately. Um, no. Oh dear. It's looking, it's looking. Not, not yet. I've been for my walk. I've been for my walk. Good, good, good. And, uh, it was nice. The sun was nice. I was walking around. Um, some people may uh, like be a bit uh, disappointed or, or sad uh, because of the lockdown situation. Um, obviously, you know, we're, we're, other people are tuning in from different places. And maybe they're not um, on lockdown, but in England, we're on lockdown. Um, people are missing, not going out and socializing and so on. But still, you can go outside, take a nice walk, look at the beauty of nature, grass, trees, flowers. And even if you might feel a little bit down, you can look up and look around and still be blessed. What do you say, Jonathan? Yes, I, I, I totally in agreement with you. I can't hear um, you. You've got your, are you muted? No, I'm not muted. Um, okay. You should be hearing me. Okay. I was, I was saying I'm totally in agreement with you. I could see earlier that somebody wanted to ask a question. Um, I know um, last week a challenge was set by Sharon for us to go for a walk. Um, I don't know if anybody would like to um, share their, if they managed to take the challenge last week and would like to share um, anything. Um, you know, not that <laughs> challenge only, but you know, we've been doing lots of different challenges. So if anyone wants to share, um, you know, how they're finding the show. I, I, and the I think this is a good time. So let, let's, 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 have some, let's have some testimony. Um, I, I can oh. see, um, is it Sheila? Um, I can see a can hand. I ask, can I ask what the challenge was? Jonathan, what was the challenge? The challenge last week was to go for a walk, at least uh, half an hour <laughs> or 20 minutes walk. Well, I couldn't go for a walk last week. I had a very upsetting time last week. I had a letter from the NHS informing me that I had to isolate myself for a whole week due to I had been in proximity with someone who had COVID. So this woman here, as you see, she hasn't been out of the house. Um, another so thing. I am a bit upset. <laughs> oh no, it's fine because um, what we did say is that even if you can't go outside for a walk, you can do the challenge in, from your kitchen to your front room or somewhere there. <laughs> you can walk inside, um, so there is no excuse. Uh, <laughs> so yes. thank thank you very much for your contribution. Mm. Is there is there anyone else? Yeah, I did my walk. Oh, I good. do my walk every, every day. I do my walk every day, actually, even previous to this, because I come down. Um, I'm a carer for my mom, so I walk down to my mom's, walk back home every day. Tell and us the benefits, Cindy. Um, Cindy, I think um, for me, that you think you obtain respiratory wise. Do you know what I'm saying? I I don't think I I walk as often as I used to, particularly particularly because of the lockdown. Um, and so I can feel that my walking is much more sluggish than it used to be. So I'm hoping to kind of walk a bit better so I, I don't feel that chesty, heavy feeling. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, and so hopefully some of the...
pounds on me will move as well. I need to get those moving. So the exercise in that is really good. Getting out in the fresh air as well. Is that, and is also, we don't have much sunlight, but just, you know, getting um, some light, you know, on the skin as well. And, and walk, walking is very beneficial. It, it will also help with us going to the toilet, isn't it, Edgar? Thank you very much, Sydney. Definitely. And that's the topic that we're going to have um, a bit later on in the month. Um, I'm talking about colon health. So we're going to put a pin in that, but we'll come back to that, Jonathan. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to give any testimony uh, or experience about uh, doing their walking? Uh, can, I, can I say that um, uh, Brother Wallace's uh, sound is not very clear. I don't know if anybody else. You're on mic. I think you may have a background noise there, Edgar. Is it your speakers? Yeah, let me work. Thanks. That should be better. Yes, much better. No worries, no worries. So uh, is there anybody else that would like to um, give us a testimony of doing their walking, whether it be in the house or it be outside or you can be creative. Somebody could have done some creative things to do their walking. So uh, the floor is open. Who would be like to be the Hello. next? Hello. Hello. Hi, it's Jennifer here. Hi, Jennifer. Um, Hi, Jennifer. Hi, um, I'm in England in Croydon. At the moment, I'm in hospital with COVID-19. Okay. I'm giving thanks. And I do get up and walk around in the ward, you know, stretch my foot and try and breathe. I'm hoping to be out by Monday, by God's grace. Okay. And I'm just wanting to know that exercising and keep the old body moving and hopefully get me home quicker. Okay. Than sitting here in the hospital, but um, I'm lacking oxygen. That's why I'm still here. Okay. I've been here for two weeks now. Thank you very much for, for for sharing, and we hope you get better mm -hmm. soon. I am. I am by God's grace. That's good. Praise the Lord. We okay. thank you, Jennifer, for joining us, and we do wish you all the best from TTI, and um, we hope that you'll get well. Um, just one little advice, if you can open the window, I know sometimes they will not allow you to open the window, but just try and, yeah, get, no. you know, get your fresh air, and we'll be praying yeah. for you, and get your water thank in. Thank you very much. I'm drinking, I'm drinking so much water, it's unbelievable. <laughs> that drinking it is coming out of me. <laughs> That's very good. But it is well. It is well. I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm moving. I'm getting better by God's grace, as I said. It's only because it's His strength, not my strength. But I'm still here. Okay. So yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Is there anybody else that would like to give us a testimony? Give us their experience. I can share something. Who's that? Go ahead, Sharon. <laughs> what do you mean, who's that? <laughs> From your wife. <laughs> Go ahead, please. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Uh, and, and I set the challenge, so I felt that I had to do something. But yeah, I actually enjoyed it. On the first, on the Sunday, I went for what was supposed to be a 20-minute um, walk, and it ended up being an hour and a half. <laughs> that was good. But um, I didn't think, okay, I've done it all in one day. So no, I had to continue. Um, I tried um, getting off the bus a bit earlier and incorporating my walk in that way. And also today, those ladies that are on our WhatsApp group will see that I've um, been through a lovely walk today and a few other days as well. So I have done some walking, but I am so impressed with Paula. I, she's our star walker on the women's group. She has just been posting how many steps she's been doing. Some days 10,000, other days more than 10, some days a little under, but she's been going for it. So well done, Paula. 
Is she is she here today? I don't know. Okay, if, if you're here. Hi, I'm here. Sorry, if you're here. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. Where are you, where are you from? Well, I, you mean the country I'm from or where I am living right now? Where are you living right now? Okay, I'm in South Haro, you know? South Haro? Where? South Haro. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, yeah. Sharon's been saying that you've been walking and walking and walking. And... Yeah, it's something I've been doing for years. Whenever I eat, I walk. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm very skinny, so I love walking, so I don't want to get fat. <laughs> All right, okay. Okay. And it makes me sleep well. I sleep like a baby at night. I love walking. Stop picking the birds. I, I love good. walking, you know, the fresh That's air. Good. And I listen to the word like today. What I did at 12, I record the church service. And then I had my lunch while I was recording. And then I had lunch and I went for a walk. And I, I listened to the church service on my way walking. Okay. Oh, very good. Yeah. So would you say that walking helps your mental health? Yeah, it, it does. Yeah, it does. You say it helps you sleep in? Yeah, I sleep like a baby, then that gets too short for me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Very good. Yeah. Very I'm, good. I'm, really, I'm, I'm, I'm very skinny. <laughs> well, that's, no, I'm glad that you're, you know, everything's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thank but, you for coming I... on and, and giving your testimony. Thank you. Please continue to listen. Thanks. Is there, is there anybody else that would like to say something? And if not, we're going to move swiftly on. So this is probably going to be the last one. If somebody's got that burning desire, that just want to say something about the benefits of walking and how they've been blessed. Um, I'd like to say something. My name is uh, Gloria Simon. Okay, and I, hi, I, hi, Gloria. Hi. Um, walking is very important. Oh, where, where, where are you from? Where are you from? Streatham. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, uh, walking is very important, as, as the lady said before, um, physical, mental, spiritual, psychological. And not only that, but when we think of the heartbeat, your heart pumps the blood around, mm -hmm. but then there's no pump for your immune system, no pump at all. So then by walking, all that uh, lymph milk to move around your body from the groin and, and your, on your thigh side of your neck and all over the body, your lymph nodes, um, that helped them that the toxins and all the bacteria and everything like that can be killed because your, your lymph milk is going from your toe to your brain and that's the only way they can move around just okay. by walking. Okay. So it's very, very important. And, and okay. as the lady said, after eating, we need mm -hmm. to really not sit down because that helps your pancreas as well to produce enough insulin to break down your glucose and bring it back to normal level in two hours. So walking helps that as well. Okay. So you've been going out most days this week? Uh, not, not like the weather was like this, you know, but I do like at home and then just go to the garden. I've got allotments as well. Oh, you've got so. an allotment? Oh, you'd be, a, you'd be a friend of Jonathan. He loves <laughs> gardening. So that's good. That's great. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Um, I think we're going to go to our disclaimer. Uh, Jonathan, would you like to uh, read that for us? I'm going to just put it on the screen. Uh, here we go. Thank you all for all the testimony. I hope somebody is blessed and encouraged to, um, to take up the challenges. So um, as you all know, we do have a disclaimer and um, the, the show that we put on every week, we are so happy to share the information as ourselves, we are benefit from it. But we are here as a platform that to educate. Um, we are not doctors. Um, so we just here trying to educate. So our disclaimer is only a physician can diagnose, treat and prescribe for illnesses or disease. Any information disclosed or discussed at the TTI Zoom talk show or for educational and informational purposes only. Please continue to seek professional medical advice from your general practitioner regarding any illnesses and disease you may be suffering from. 
we hope that you will be able to stay with us. We have Louis, Louis presenting this evening. Um, he will be touching on um, temperance. And you do know that against such there is no law if we are temperate in all things. I'm sure that um, we all need help in this area. So we look forward to listen to the presentation. Thank you very much. Can I just have one question? You just said temperance and that there's, there's no law. What? Can you just, you'd like to just elaborate on that a little bit? Um, you want to touch on that, Lewis? You might be, I don't want to jump ahead, Lewis' presentation. Um, Lewis may be covering it. Okay, but if but not, I, that's I can. That's fine. That's fine. But if Louis, Louis still <laughs> cover it, I'm coming back to you. Okay. All right. Louis, All right. are you ready for? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Yes, I'm, I'm ready when everyone is okay. ready. Yeah. Thank you very much, Louis. And we're going to leave right. you to continue with a wonderful presentation. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let me just share my screen. Right, everyone. Um, today we're going we're talking about um, temperance. I know we've been through a lot of the acronym in New Start, and we've been through nutrition. There's exercise, W for water, S for sunshine, and we now T for temperance. I know we didn't, we didn't do them all orders, but we have T for temperance, and temperance is important. And we will just dive into it and see exactly what. The importance of temperance and what it means by true temperance in all things and obviously our ministry is called true temperance international and i'll give you a bit of a backdrop on why we're called true temperance well right, i'm just going to share my screen go big screen and then we begin so this is part one and the reason why because um temperance is a is a vast subject so um we saw part one goes whether we do part two all right let's get into this so why are we called true temperance? So the world is a laser house filled with victims of both physical and spiritual disease. Everywhere people are perishing for a lack of knowledge of the truths that are being committed to us. So as we can look around right now, even last year, um, and oh, by the way, Happy New Year to everyone. And last year, like we see that we went through a terrible health crisis, but even before then, you see cancer was on the rise, diabetes was on the rise, heart disease was on the rise. Um, so many different um, issues that we're having in this world, especially when it comes to disease and sickness. And the question, and the statement is saying that the world is a laser house. And because of this reason, and because the knowledge that we have been gifted with as individuals from the manual that God's given us, that we came together and we formed an organization called True Temperance. So we realized that the people are lacking in something that's vitally important for health, which can lead to many diseases and sickness in this world, not just physical but spiritual diseases and that including the mental faculties of man um, we're talking depression we're talking about um psychotic issues that, that a lot of people have so we have so these are um things that men suffer that if they understood true temperance a lot of these diseases and problems will vastly reduce in this world so this one so as an organization this is why we've been created we've been created to impart to you divine knowledge that will give you health and life and peace so says the wise man proverbs 8 14 just to start counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength and psalm 67 verse 2 says that thy way may be known upon the earth thy saving health among all nations and in john 14 verse 6 the righteous man Jesus himself says unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So what I'm trying to bring out here is that we see that sound wisdom and understanding that the world is lacking when it comes to temperance and disease and sickness, that God has got that answer, that God puts in his mind, this Bible, a blueprint of what true temperance is, a blueprint of what health and salvation is. But as you know, as man has moved away from the blueprint, we move away from, from the ways of God. We need Christ is the truth, he's the way, he's the life. If a man has moved away from his blessed creator, a lot of these diseases and illnesses came into the world. 
So the wisdom that I'm going to give you today, I ask you to be patiently, patiently following me. The wisdom I'll be imparting today is wisdom from above, wisdom from the manual itself, the Bible itself, right? So that's my basis. That's our true foundation. So the Bible is tree. So Genesis 3, 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So from this historical biblical account, that we see that in the beginning, the very inception of sin, of, our, of humanity's problem, was based on food. The very inception of humanity's problem was based on obedience. Right? So we see that that food and intemperance was the very beginning of mankind's fall. And because Eve seen the fruit, the fruit, the forbidden fruit that she was not to eat of, but because it was pleasant to the eyes, it looked good, it probably was juicy, it smelled good, etc. Her tummy started rumbling, even though she had a variety of trees around her to pick fruit from, she chose this one. So it shows that if we cannot have self-control, it can cause many woes. Now, if we look at now 2020 from, from 6,000 years ago when this issue happened, we look at this now, uh, this wrong, wrong choice by Eve results in the fall of mankind, results in intemperance in every age, in every culture. Now, an example, we can see a variety of foods right now. 2020, this is what we see. We see desserts, we see obviously fast food chains, we see um, exotic, um, totally health-destroying foods that we can see on, on, on the left-hand side. We can see even our brothers and sisters, ourselves, we indulge in that that fried chicken, those um, refined foods, we're looking at the processed foods, etc. We see intemperance is running rampant in the world. And as intemperance increases, so is disease, so is sickness, so is crime, so is social in instability. And another study, this is from the world, it says children, this from the Guardian, sorry, it says children seen up to 12 adverts for junk food and an hour on TV, this study find. This study was done in 2017, I believe. So um, it was, it, it's quite alarming because a lot of us, we have TVs, our children have TVs. So this ain't children, but my, uh, what about the adults? We all want children ourselves. So we've been bombarded with fast food and just everything that will destroy our health, everything that, that will force intemperance upon her, everything that will make us desire it, just how Eve desired the fruit. Everything that may look good for food, but might not be good for food, as we think it is. And so we see this uh, on a social level, even on the social medias, we see the same issue. And in 2020, we have that same issue. We have a, we have a health crisis right now, and we have no, and we're struggling to deal with it. So we see that the TV as a life, as since that fall of Eve, we can see that pattern of intemperance, a pattern of men turn trying to be wise in their own eyes, not taking the wisdom that God said, I am wisdom, I am counsel, I am understanding. And God promises that we are elf among the nations if we follow his, his blueprint of key, of elf. So just want to show you that we see from the world point of view, from a biblical point of view, we have the same issues, that they speak of the same issue in temperance, right? So the question is, what is true temperance? What is true temperance? Um, what is true temperance? I can open the floor for two minutes if someone can just answer a question. And what definition of what is temperance or what is true temperance? Feel free to um, unmute yourself just for two minutes quickly. I'm just before I move on. Avoiding everything that is unhelpful and using that which is helpful judiciously. Okay. 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 That's, I like. I like that. I like that. Sorry. So again, abstain from all things that are harmful and hazardous to your health, and doing that which is good in moderation. Amen. Amen. Okay. Wonderful. So we look at we are very clued up what what and temperance is right. Wonderful. So let's keep keep it moving. So, just like what my brother and my sister said, I'm saying from all that is on phone and using it judiciously, that which is good. And I put my note to the bottom and say, perfect health requires absolute temperance. 
perfect health requires absolute temperance. And when we talk about perfect health, we, we talk, I'm talking perfect health in mental health, physical health, social health, and spiritual health. So in order for us to have these four aspects under control in good health, then it's important that we understand that abstaining from all that is awful and using judiciously that which is good. Easy to say, but it's hard to follow. Right, so in our life, generally, this is just a general picture. We are obviously focused on, we have finance, we have our careers, we have our finance, we have our mental, educational um, side of us. We have the physical and our health, which is what we're talking about today, mainly. But Every single part is impacting on that. Our health impacts every part of the circle, right? This pie chart, for example, this is you and you, and these are you have your family, you have your own life, you have your spiritual and ethical life that um, that you take part in, whether it be Christianity, Muslim, yoga, etc., um, or just not, just um, a non-believer, etc. You have that side of you. You have your social side, always meet up your friends, um, your family, etc. The cultural, the culture you came from depends on where which part of the world you're born in and, and what ethnicity you are. And so these these things are impacted. Temperance, I'm telling you, impact every single one of these things. So we need to understand key the key of temperance. Like it impacts all these things. And today, by, by God's grace, we, could, we will see exactly how it impacts these things. So the question is, where do you start? Where do we start? Where do we start when it comes to temperance? Where do we start? Right. So from Dr. Umar Farouk, I believe Abdul Allah, is this hunger is a first element, the first witness. Hunger is a first element of self-discipline. If you can control what you eat and drink, you can control everything else. What a potent statement. Hunger is the first element of self-discipline, right, guys? If we can control what we eat and drink, by and by, we can control everything else on life. So whether it be our social life, our financial life, whether it be um, our family life, uh, whether it be um, every other part of our life, um, we will be able to control, have much better control over these things if we control what we eat and drink. Second witness, right? From um, it says erroneous eating and drinking results in erroneous thinking and acting. Councils on diet and food. So a book called Council on Diet and Food, a lovely book. It says erroneous eating and drinking will result in erroneous thinking and acting. All right. So the first witness, you see doctors saying that if we can control what we eat and drink, we can control every part of our lives. So by default, he's saying if we cannot control what we eat and drink, then can we really control every part of our life, including our thoughts and our actions? All these things will be affected by how we eat and drink. A third witness. This is from the manual, the Bible. It's taken from Isaiah 7, verse 15. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. So the same principles we bring out from doctors in the world, from the Bible, and from other authors. I've realized that what we eat will have a drastic um, influence upon our choices in life. How we eat and drink have a drastic influence upon our choices in life, whether it be for good or whether it be for bad. As the Bible was stated, whether you a certain type of diet will lead you to think evil, choose evil, or choose good, right? So that's something for you to think about. We are the third witness, right? So choices, choices, choices. Once again, guys, choices. Like, what? How do we choose? Like, we can see have nice cakes, some um, cookies, and see some donuts down there. We have a nice apple, orange, and some bananas. Choices. This is, this is, this is what we've been given at the beginning. Free choice. Eve chose. <laughs> she chose the donuts <laughs> by default. What will we choose? We will make the same mistake, but we follow the same pattern that our first mother Eve chose. So the question is, are we choosing? Do, when we see our food, do we think, okay, how will this make me think today? How will this food make me feel today? How is this going to influence me um, to be a better person? How is it going to influence my choice my, my choice to even buy a home, to buy a car, to, be, to go into a relationship? What you eat impacts every part of these, these things. So choices, choices, choices. Once again, I bid you make the temperate choice. So this is from Harvard Elf study. It says, think about it. Your brain is always on, right? So your brain never switch off. It's always on. It takes care of your thoughts, your movements, 
your breathing, your heartbeat, your senses. It works all 24-7. Even while you're asleep, this means your brain requires constant supply of fuel, right? So we all agree that. Our brain controls many aspects of, of the body, especially the thoughts, right? And the judgment seats that's found in the frontal lobe, right, guys? That fuel or blood, so I put in the word blood there, so blood, so so the fuel for the obviously for the brain is the blood which carries the glucose etc and everything else that the blood takes in so the fuel or the blood from the foods you eat and what's in that fuel will make makes all the difference so whatever you eat turns into blood right that blood whatever was in that food they eat was in that blood right and that blood will make the difference to how the brain will operate. So put simply, as it says, what you eat directly affects the structure and the function of your brain, ultimately your mood, right? So we know what we eat can have a very vast aspect of our mood. Many times you hear people say, oh, um, um, I'm comfort eating, right? A lot of people are comfort eating, for example. Why do they, because how they feel makes them want to eat. I feel, don't feel good today. I don't eat some donuts, some chicken, some fried rice or something, yeah? Just want to make myself feel good, so I eat some food, right? And even when the movies, you see that women, that example, that they fall in, like, so earn a boyfriend or boy, also my wife fall out in a big argument, you see the woman's eating some ice cream, sitting on a couch or something. Like, you see these things in movies, you see these things um, all about, oh, you see the guy go to the, he go to the um, pub and start drinking beers with his friends and stuff like that. We see all these things inside movies, inside, inside the television, that it, sh it shows that there's a connection between how we feel and how we eat, or, or rather, what we eat influence how we feel and how we behave so it carries on listen like an expensive car your brain functions best when it gets only premium fuel so that's top quality fuel your brain will function best guys this is this is science i'm giving you here right that when the best the better quality of food you put in the better quality of the function of your brain that means the more healthy your thoughts will be as well eating high quality foods that contain lots of vitamins minerals Antioxidants nourishes the brain and protects it from oxidative stress. The waste, the free radicals, produce when the body, sorry, when the body uses oxygen, which can damage the cells, right? So, so what we eat will help protect our brain from free radicals, etc. What we eat, right? But unfortunately, just like an expensive car, your brain can be damaged if you ingest anything other than top quality or premium fuel. If substances from low premium fuels, such as what you get from the processed or refined foods, right? This is so processed and refined foods are classic low fuel, low grade, right? Get to the brain. It has little ability to get rid of them. Diets high in refined sugars, for example, are harmful to the brain. In addition to worsening your body's regulation of insulin, they also promote inflammation and oxidative stress. So this is the physical damage that low premium fuel or bad quality blood will have upon the body, right? But remember, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the, the organs only receive what, what the blood carries to it. So if there's a lot of, um, example, bad chemicals in that blood, that will go to whatever organ that blood is carrying it to. So those chemicals will have an impact upon the organ, whether it be the kidneys or the liver, etc. It will have an impact upon that organ. So it's important now that you must see yourself as a premium, as a high quality car, right? So multitude, multitude studies are found, so multiple studies are found, a correlation between diet high in refined sugars and impaired brain function. Now that is very important. And even a worsening of symptoms of mood disorders such as depression. So now guys, what you eat has a connection to how you feel, how you think, how you act. How you behave and what choices you make in life. Some of us are just might be stubborn, ignorant people only because of how we eat, because of the choices we make of food. Some of us are depressed, largely because of what we eat. And because the brain can't function the way it's functioning, our thinking is impaired. Now, a simple situation or a crisis comes into our life. Our depression gets worse. Our mental state gets worse because of the quality we put inside of ourselves. Not all, but some. But there's a correlation between what we eat, guys, and how our brain functions. All right. 
So this is just um, a train of thought. Say what we eat and drink turns into blood, just like what the article says, right? That blood goes throughout the body, including the brain. So that blood goes around, eat and drink, turns into blood. The blood goes around the body, right? Then it goes to the brain as well, right? The quality of that blood in the brain will have a positive or negative effect upon the brain. Where our thoughts, our moods, our actions is formed. So, so you can see the system of what's happening. What we eat turns the blood, what we, what we then, then that blood turns in, goes into the different body organs, as such as the brain. And the quality of that blood, now what, whatever that blood carries to the brain will have an effect, whether it be for evil or for good. And now that will also, and then that will influence our thoughts, our actions, which will ultimately determine our moral character. So what we eat will have an impact on our morality. So the downward spiral of intemperance. Being intemperate, being intemperate violate, is violation, sorry, is a violation of the health laws. That meant to say, right? And violation, and sorry, violating the health laws, which is new stock, which we've been promoting for the very beginning. So we're talking about nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance we speak about right now fresh air, rest, and trust in God, right? These, these laws are there to keep you healthy and happy and holy, right? This is why these laws are beginning. This is why God put these laws in the very inception of time, right? So temperance is, the mid, is in the middle of these laws, right? The temperance is going to sit in the middle. So you, this temperance, the temperance will go towards all, right? It stretches towards all. It expects you to exercise all. And that's how you know you have true temperance. You exercise all these laws together as a whole, you have true temperance. But when we violate different parts of the law, this is where intemperate comes in. So even if we eat and well, but then we don't sleep at all, we're practicing intemperance. That's why, that's what the Bible says that in that, in that guilty of breaking one of the law, it's guilty of breaking all. That's the in James, right? So the reason why, when you break one, it has a knock-on effect on every other part of of um, the laws that the, that that we've been that that's that's in our being. So it's important that we understand that being intemperate is violation of the elf laws. So violation of the elf laws, new stars we call it, leads to mental, physical, spiritual, and social problems. That that leads to to all the problems we have in society from murder, rape, lying, stealing, adultery, suicide, depression, fraud, gambling, sickness, etc. Right? Because remember, whatever we eat influences our thoughts, our ideas, our actions, our feelings, and our, ultimately our character. Right? So now, ultimately, this is a violation of God's Ten Commandments. So oftentimes, oftentimes, we can clear up the mind by what we eat, we can clear the thought pattern. We can clear the thought pattern, then you can have a more clear conception of life. What is the important things in life? How to deal with problems in life. And not to lash out at every problems we have in life or not to get depressed over every tough situation. If our minds are clouded, we cannot think straight. We cannot make the right choices in life. We make intemperate choices that lead to more intemperate choices that can lead to any one of these issues that, that's been highlighted. So it's important, guys, ladies and gentlemen, old and young, that we understand that violating, being intemperate will cause a vast problem, not just physical problems, but it, it causes moral problems in, in society as well. Right, so Bible and science testifies, right? Bible science, this is, right? So eating too frequently and too much. Those who eat and work intemperately and irrationally talk and act irrationally. So this is taken from a book called Christian Temperance and Bible Hygiene. So this is take this is based on the Bible, right? Eating too frequently or too much, right? Those who eat and work intemperately and rationally talk and act irrationally. It is not necessary to drink alcohol or liquors to, in order to be intemperate. So you don't have to be a drunkard to be intemperate. The sin of temperate eating, eating too frequently, too much, and of rich and wholesome food destroys the healthy action of the digestive organs, which then affects the brain and perverts the judgment, like we highlighted before. And science have proven this as well, preventing rational, calm, healthy thinking and acting. 
Now, this is this is this is powerful. This is Bible science. Let's go to something else now. Science and the Bible testifies, right? Science and the Bible also testifies is that grains, fruits, nuts, vegetables, right? These things, science has proven this, and also the Bible promotes this. That these these things are what a lot of people that make diet changes for health and to and to fight against sickness. And many people, many people, many people who suffer with cancer and many of these um, lifestyle diseases that they can't think as they used to think. They're, they're always in, there's always this cloud about them because their, their, their physical health is impaired. Their mental health also becomes impaired. And often times they lose faith in, 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 in things they used to believe. And this is all impacts from how they eat and drink. So as this is testifying in, in this book, it's saying the grains... The grains, the fruits, the nuts, and the vegetables contain all the nutritive properties necessary to make good blood. Once again, guys, good blood, good food. We need to be making good blood. Remember the life of the flesh is in the blood, right, guys? The life of the flesh is in the blood, right? These elements are not so well or so fully supplied by a flesh diet. Are the use of flesh being essential to health and strength? Animal food would have been included in a diet appointed man in the beginning. So this is... From the very beginning, and science has proven that if we the less flesh we eat, then less um unwholesome stuff we eat, our health will be much more clear, our mind will be much more healthier, and ultimately our life, our, our quality of life will be better. This is obviously a second witness from the Bible and from the books as well. So the manual, which is the Bible says now, Exodus 15, verse 26, and said, If thou will diligently arc in or hear. To the voice of the lord remember at the very beginning I, I brought out that the lord said i have wisdom i have understanding so if we go back to the manual so so what god is saying that i have designed the body i know i know best how to take care of the body science has its place but for me personally i must go to the manual i must see exactly can science testify that that what god is saying is true or does it go against what god is saying these things will determine my choices and what I eat and drink and how I live my life. I want knowledge that, that, that comes from above because men are too often make mistakes, especially when it comes to our health and well-being. So I read on, it says, anyway, and he said, if thou will diligently hear to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments. Now, this is important. Remember, I linked new thoughts with the commandments of God, right? This is key. And keep all the statues. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that dealeth thee. The Lord is saying that uh, oftentimes disease and sickness will come to a violation of his commandments. God has put commandments in our nature. In the laws of nature, God has placed the, the issue of new start. He told us how to, what the importance of nutrition. He told us the importance of exercise. He told us the importance of water. He's told us the importance of sunshine. He's told us the importance of temperance in all things. He's told us the importance of fresh air, of resting, and also the more importantly, he chose the importance of trusting in him because he's the one that he left you. So the question is now, God said, so you violating these commandments, or even if you say, I don't violate God's commandments, I'm a good person. But then I would say, do you violate the health laws? Thereby you violate the commandments of God. But these are, were commanded in our being these were put in our very vessels as we were born so it's important that if we are kin onto these commandments we should then go study them out now how can these things how how is this impacting my life my well-being as we can see there's a connection between correlation between what we eat and now and our elf and our thoughts and our ideas of life so the 10 prints, I bring out 10 principles of eating, guys, right? These 10 principles are important. In order for you to be temperate in your eating, these 10, these 10 principles must, must be considered. Yeah? So let about five to six hours elapse between each meal. That's number one. So eat your breakfast at, at seven or eight, whatever it is. Then you must let at least five to six hours elapse before you eat before anything goes into your mouth again well of course you can drink but not and that's about talking about food solid food let five to six hours of solid food elapse before you can eat again in the second meal so 
Number two, you eat between two to three meals a day. Maximum three meals. Two meals, if you can, three meals. If, oh, two meals is too bad, right? So let two to three meals elapse. So it'd be eating during the day. Three, never eat and drink at the same time. We call this bad habit of eating, eat, uh, taking a bite, then drinking some food, some some um, juice to wash it down. Let's not wash down our food, guys. But it's in this digestion, it interrupts the whole issue of digestion. So instead of you now um, digesting your food within four hours, your food will take about 10 hours to digest because you've interrupted the process, which can cause decay in the stomach, which then leads to bad blood, which will lead to intemperance in your thinking, which will lead to bad actions and thoughts and feelings, which can lead to a bad moral character, which will end up, you can be, you, you can be that guy that will commit adultery because of are you eating and drinking. You can be that guy that will lie and that will steal. You can be that that woman that will be jealous and covetous of her sisters because of you violating those two simple rules at the very beginning. So never eat and drink at the same time. Number four, drink about 30 minutes before each meal if you can, right? I know this, we, we from 30 minutes if you can, eat 30 minutes before. So let the chance for the, give chance for your body to observe whatever you drank before you then put food into your stomach, right? Number five, do not snack anything between meals, right? So don't even put, not even a peanut into your mouth between those five hours of when you eat your breakfast, eat your dinner, etc. right? So between each meal must be five hours and do not snack anything. Because I know the UK especially, I know we are a nation of grazers. We love grazing. It's literally just snacking along like cows, just grazing, 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 grazing. Like we're sheep on a farm. So we need to get out that habit. It's a bad habit and it's very health destroying. Because that hinders once you end the digestion. Remember, we're trying to have premium fuel, guys. Premium fuel for this exotic car, which is our bodies, right? So we want to make the best choices in life. In order for us to do that, we must have the best quality of blood. And every and if you violate any of these rules, it compromises the quality of blood that we can have, for, especially for our brain. Do not eat fruit and, and green vegetables at the same time because these two food groups, they digest at different rates. Fruits will digest much faster than the green vegetables eat them at the same time. What happens is that you can cause the, the green vegetables to start to decay and rot in the stomach. So the best you just separate, eat them separately, right? The fruit digests much quicker than vegetables do, green leafy vegetables. Do not eat late or just before bed, once again, because the stomach needs to rest. Eat about three to four hours before bedtime if you can. So, you know, go to bed at 10 o'clock, don't eat anything, anything after six o'clock, for example, right? So, it's important that um, that we don't eat too late or eat just before going to bed. I know it's a temptation, I know, but even with myself, it's annoying because like, when you end up staying up late, what can happen is you start to feel hungry again. So, best drink some water, Close the eyes and try to sleep if you can. That's the best option. Um, or drink or drink some type of herbal tea or something like that. It says do not overeat, please, guys. Overeat. That's something that we all suffer. We we a lot. The, the terminology is eat with your eyes. I used to do it often. Eat with my eyes. Like I literally see all this good food on the table. Wow. I want to have a bit everything. A lot of times, even when we go out to restaurants, for example, we have the first course, the second course, the third, the third course, uh, these different courses, and then we have the dessert afterwards. Overeating. We already fall between the, the, the first and second course, but we have in the third and we have the desserts afterwards. So it's best to eat everything at the same time in one plate. So what you eat, eat your stuff together. And instead of just saying, I'll eat my um my meal now, eat some dessert later, etc. Try your best not to overeat. Masticate the food properly, so chew your food properly, and that will help you. That will stop the the issue of overeating as well. So, so a lot of times, a lot of us are like ducks; we just swallow. Literally, the food comes in one, two, chew, and we swallow everything down. The food is not even broken up. Remember, digestion starts in the mouth. We have enzymes that break down starch and sugars in the mouth. We need to allow the the, the body to masticate that food to break it up properly, so then it's easier, it's lighter on our stomachs to break it down. All right, guys, so it's important that we establish that. And do not eat very hot or cold food or drinks. Once again, the food is too hot, it's too spicy, too hot. It goes into the stomach, it irritates the stomach. On top of that, you start need to cool it down before you can break it down properly and observe it into the blood properly. Same thing with cold food. You need to warm it up. The food is way too cold. It's freezing. You, you can feel the shock in your body as well. So just be mindful of hot and cold drinks. So these 10 principles, like the 10 commandments, 
you violate law one you have a you have a, you have a knock-on effect upon the quality of the blood right so i'm just trying to give you um this is heavenly wisdom this is divine knowledge that's been passed down to us and this is why we're trying to give you well, lack of knowledge, we can educate, 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 educate. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not saying that, um, saying that that you'll be um, in bad health if you violate all these, if, if I own these rules. What I'm saying is that how we eat now, we can always improve upon it. So we're here to educate you to be better. So some just for example, foods of intemperance, foods of intemperance. So these type of foods will will produce bad blood, right? These food will produce on healthy fuel, caffeine products, caffeine, refined sugars, drinks, sweets, etc. Flesh will produce bad blood. Alcohol will produce bad blood. Vinegar will produce bad blood. Table salts, the cheap table salt will produce bad blood. Spices and condiments containing MSG and other stuff will produce bad blood. Fish, a lot of fish are full of mercury, a lot of fish are farmed, etc. They produce bad blood. White flowers, white flour products, etc. That you those example like white rice, white bread, etc. That'll produce bad blood. Cheese and milk, to, to most degree, will produce bad blood. Especially the cheese will produce bad blood. Baking soda contain products so that's including the cakes. Baking soda will have a. I was just going to emphasize being baking soda. The reason why I can no piece of wild baking soda is not meant to be good for you. Baking soda is good because it is very alkaline, right? It can alkalize the blood. But it's bad when it's inside cakes and stuff like that. The reason why, because when you ain't digest it your body inside your stomach is acidic it needs to be acidic in order to break down the food properly right so now if you eat a lot of food that's um that will when when the acid eats it will will produce an alkaline effect upon you then what will happen is that it can compromise the digestion of the food which can lead to the food rotting inside your stomach etc right so i would normally advise to, you can avoid that avoid as much as possible processed food fast foods etc will produce bad blood smoking we know that drugs etc these are things that we intake so drugs will produce bad blood as well etc so all these things you need to just be mindful of them and we're trying to promote you away from these things and see someone's right on my screen um can you just avoid that please right next so this is a the um a pyramid of of intemperance you see some food stuff. We have our frozen foods. You know, you have to be just control the amount of stuff you eat after you eat these things. Let these things be absolute minimum if you have to eat these things, right? So these, this is just um, a nice um, pyramid of intemperate food. We have the pieces. You have hot dogs. We have obviously ice creams. You have a lot of chocolates. You have um, you crisps, etc. These foods will not produce good blood in the long run. So it's something you have to be mindful. Sometimes I know you can be broke and you have to buy the cheap foods. So I was, so I understand that. Um, but like I say, take time. I tell people a lot of times that if anything else that you spend money on, spend money on how you treat yourself. Spend money on the food, the quality of food that you buy for yourself. So sometimes the, I know the unhealthy stuff are much more cheaper in general, which is a shame in society. It shouldn't be like that. So um, I'm just bid you to um, maybe even have a like review your shopping list and say okay what can i change this week how can i be more temperate this week in what i eat and the quality of food that I put in my basket remember everything you eat will have a knock-on effect upon your character upon your choices in life and on your ultimately your destiny as well so this is i call it you see the road food pyramid i call it the, the pyramid of temperance so you have your leafy greens eat generously Fruits and vegetables are foundational foods. They are, right? They are food. They have, they have all, remember what we read? Fruits, nuts, and grains are what have been given in the very beginning of time. Adam and Eve were given fruits, nuts, and grains. Think about that, guys, yeah? So these have all your minerals, your vitamins, um, your all your all the good fatty acids, your proteins, your carbohydrates, everything that you need to build good blood, right? Remember, the whole point of food is to build good blood. And remember, the life of the flesh is the blood so the life of that organ is that blood that goes into it so we need food that will build this man this these foods will build good blood sprouts and legumes eat moderately right 
there we get your, a lot of your amino acids from etc you have your seeds your empty seeds nuts etc eat sparingly as well right eat those fruits eat your microgreens your wheatgrass your seaweed these will give you um a lot of nutrients that the body needs to produce good food and then you have your medicine herbs you eat them sparingly because they only use um for cleansing to promote um to strengthen the body at times of weakness so god has given us everything in nature that we shall prosper and be an elf so our souls may prosper brethren let us understand that all this leads to the judgment seat the frontal lobe which is your judgment seat everything we put in our bodies will have a knock-on effect upon our moral character and what we eat will ultimately have an effect upon how we view eternal things as well right so a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step so let's not be overwhelmed with information i've given you but a journey of a thousand miles guys start with one step right so so it's a step just take it take a step a step at a time it's not not it's nothing to rush into or to sell my days with our start just start simple like that is this, this this little kid he's, he's struggling but he's taking that if he's taking that first step to climbing that stairs and you can take the first step to to um to health to well-being to mental spiritual physical and social well-being so i bid you take the first step in temperance in all things right um yeah so before we move on um i will stop there for questions and answers <clears throat> before i set the challenge Jonathan, um, Edgar. Yeah, so um, should I set the challenge or should I, should I no, set the uh, challenge? I'll thank say you. Let's, let's thank say, you. Go ahead, Jonathan. No, thank you, Lewis, for the presentation. You can stop sharing, Lewis, and then we can come back to, um, we can take some question and then come back to your challenge. The challenge. For the okay. week. But we want to thank you for a good presentation. I think the presentation is very well um you know, balance and, and, and put together. So thank you very much. I can see the chat is going off. Um, okay. There's quite a few questions in there. We want to thank those people that can see Lucille answering some who are in the background. Sharon is answering some, but we may have to pick up on some of them okay. as well. So thank you very much, Lewis. Um, Edgar? Um, yeah, so again, thank you for the presentation, Lewis. Um, um, we're just wondering if anybody's got some questions that they would like to add. Now, I, do, I would like to speak on one thing that I saw. And one person put in the chat, I don't know if you saw it, Jonathan. They said, well, wow, with all these different things, there's nothing left to eat. I don't know if you saw <laughs> <laughs> it. So I, I think you might have upset a few people, Lewis. Um, yeah. <laughs> But, but I do like the, the food pyramid that you, sh the last one you showed, where you showed yeah. there's greens and there's nuts and there's there's lots of different things. Um, some of what this is about is, is your mindset. When you say there's nothing left to eat, you're, mm. you're narrowing your mind as to the things that you can eat, where there's lots and lots of different things that you can do. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree, yeah. Because oftentimes, because a lot of people say, like, when you're transitioning, like, what do I eat? Like I say, you start yeah. with one thing. You start, it's, it's a process. It's not, you jump, you become this perfect um, alternative eater, or you have the perfect um, um, understanding of what to eat healthy food. So it's just about starting with one thing and making that steady changes, and you see your health improve, even your, and your mindset will improve. And that's something I personally can testify, that my mindset, like, physically and my mental health improve dramatically. And I made my changes. Lois, hmm. someone is just asking if you'd be able to just show that pyramid again. Um, I think someone oh. may want to take a picture or something. Okay, one okay. minute. Um, Let me share. So while Lewis is sharing, um, has anybody got a question about the presentation that they would like to put to Lewis? Uh, this is an yes, opportunity now a that you can uh, com come in and ask your question. And Lewis, I have a, Stanson. I have a question. Dion has a question. And what's your name? Dion. Hi, where are you from, Dion? Tottenham. Okay, hi, Dion. Go ahead. Hi. Yeah, um, I did put in the chat, but I don't know if anybody um, was able to respond. 
Um, when we talk about temperance, does that mean that we eat nothing else except what is on the temperance food pyramid? Because on the intemperance food pyramid, there are different stuff on there. So is temperance saying that never touch anything on the intemperance um, pyramid, but only eat from the temperance pyramid? Is that what temperance is saying? Or is there some balance or it's just a complete no-no? Okay, that's okay. That's good question. Good question. Um, this is gonna sound it's a hard saying, but like no, we, go for it. That's and that's cool. why we asked the question. Ask the question. <laughs> what is temperance? And two, uh, um, I think Chris and another lady said, um, um, abstaining from all that's on for and eating judiciously, all that is helpful. Okay. So it's 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 actually absolute. So if um, okay. so that's how we I lay the blueprint, the, the very blueprint that God's given us in the very beginning. Um, now, whether we believers or non-believers, science has proven the same fact that the more we eat of our the more natural you know, veg vegetarian diet and, life, yeah. and live a simpler lifestyle, more, more connected to nature, then we tend to be healthier physically, mentally. So, um, so yes, it's absolute. Um, if you can avoid completely, then by all means, please avoid. Because remember, even if you eat that one ice cream, um, all it does for you is taste good. There's nothing else it does for you properly as not as much as you eat for example you eating some vegetables so it may give you a little but it, it but also gives you a lot of bad with it so okay. um so, so yeah so it's just complete complete if you can avoid it completely that would be that would be the best to be honest okay. Lewis, so, can i just sorry. ask you to stop sharing now please thank you yeah sorry so um let's say we know we know sausages are processed food and as you said ice cream is bad so if you I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure. So if you made a, a vegan sausage through your veg and you made a vegan ice cream, is that okay? Yeah. Or we shouldn't have those either because they're ice cream and sausages? So that's a good question. That, that's um, that's something that um, even myself, like with, say, so just because I, because like, some people ask a question, how come there's um, some vegetarian people, or vegan people, etc., cetera, are overweight or, or they're sick as everyone else? So just because something is vegan doesn't make it healthy. Okay. So what we're trying to promote is that um, health, the first choice should be health. So if your vegan sausage is made in such a way that it's not, and that is full of um, a lot of ingredients that will not help you, help to promote good blood, then maybe you mm -hmm. should discard of it or find a better way of making vegan sausages. Okay. So um, neither am I telling you to discard everything in your fridge, but what I'm saying is a process. So, what, so you start with one thing, you improve on everything that you can. And that mm -hmm. you come to the point that you're eating a very cleaner, much cleaner diet, and you should see it in your health and also in in and also how you feel as well. So, it's it's all about that step towards a better health, step towards temperance. Excellent, thank you very much, much appreciated. No we do have a hand up. Um, that, that's Dion. Um, I'm going to put my hand down now. No, um, <laughs> no, we have another hand. Brent, you want to come okay. in here? Brent. Thank you. Yes, um, hi guys. Hi everybody. Um, yeah, it's a question uh, uh, that I've seen, seen two of the um, participants have raised, which, which is with regards to uh, the mention about not mixing fruit and vegetables. Yeah. And is it okay to mix the fruit and vegetables when you're juicing? Because I've often seen where there's juicing, say a, a five day or a seven day uh, juicing detox program where they do mix fruit and vegetables. Yeah. Um, what, what's your take on that? Um, I obviously my take will be a personal take rather than what is actually um, right or wrong in the sense of that some people think is okay, but me personally, I don't mix fruit and vegetables even when I'm juicing. I personally will just keep it separate because I because I'm not exactly sure um, of the chemical changes that happens that like, with the fruit and vegetables where you mix them and you drink them. Whether there's no impact on the body, we we we're not sure. So just mm. so so for safety and, and to get the maximum out of that juice, I rather just juice it separately. Mm. So if I'm juice, say if I've got carrots and I have apples, I'll I'll never personally mix them together. I'll just juice it. I'll juice the apple separately and I'll juice um, mm. the carrot separately. And I find personally that even the taste and everything is much more stronger when you even separate. It seems more potent. 
So, so what you're saying is that certain food groups could uh, have more adverse effects than others, depending on what they are, I suppose. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But Jonathan, right. yeah, I'm not sure if everyone else have anything to say about that, but yeah, I personally would, I will mix them together. Like if I'm making broccoli juice, I keep a drop. I keep with broccoli juice. If I'm making carrot juice, I keep with carrot juice. If I'm making apple juice, I keep with apple juice. Yeah, I think yeah. that works better, personally. Jonathan, could you just um, monitor the chat? Because I think there's quite a few questions. You can see something that could be addressed. And I'll still cover the floor. So if there's, is anybody else that has a question? I see one, Audrey. Yes, sure. Yeah, do you want to go ahead? And um, where are you from? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm from London. Mine okay. is not a question, but it's a comment. I look at the world through temperance. And for me, uh, mm -hmm. the most important thing there is true. And at the beginning of his presentation, he told us that he, he put on a verse, which I, think, I believe it came from Exodus, where God said, if you follow my rules, I will not put these diseases upon you that I put on the Egyptians. And it's okay when you are young to lack rules here and there. As you get older, you reap the results of lexing the rules that you learn, i.e. in this uh, platform where we are at wonderful rules that we're getting and you know when arthritis comes and all these things it's tough it's not easy and you have to stop working just because of the pains and so really i believe true temperance means true temperance and nothing else that's my opinion but i may be wrong it's up to people to take whatever they want to take kindly remove my raised hands i don't know how to do it Okay. Uh, Thank I'm sure, you. I'm sure somebody will do that. Thank you very much for your comment. Um, is there another question? I've got uh, naturally mine. Um, would you like? Hi. To, and who? Who? Uh, where are you from? What's your name? Um, my name is Richard, and I'm from West Beach. Um, originally What's... Tottenham West Green Road. Originally. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to qu um, clarify my brother's um, statement about juicing. Um, mixing fruits and veg. There is absolutely no problem with mixing fruit um, and vegetables when you're juicing. If you're talking about mixing general fruits and vegetables in a smoothie, then you're mixing and blending up two food sources to be digested in the gut. But when you are juicing, those are fluids which are absorbed into the blood. So there isn't an issue with mixing your apple with kale and romaine lettuce and, um, and um, you call it any, pak, pak choy or whatever. So there are, there are a few fruits that can cross over into the vegetable rain. I only use apples to when I'm juicing um, my green leafy vegetables. Yeah, is that clear? Yes, um, so so basically um we, it's only when you have to draw a distinction because i always come across people who argue with the point but what they're talking about when they say juicing they're talking about smoothies blending and you have to be clear when you're telling people about juicing yeah, blending. Yes, I agree. Lot of people have a very very distinct um, res um response to juicing and blending juicing is the is the is the fluid that comes from the apple, that comes from the green. Smoothies and blending is when you just crush up the foods and make them into a paste and then you consume them. That's food, period. But when you're juicing, you're having the fluid from those. They go straight into the system, they aid the blood, they aid the lymph, they aid, aid the system in general. So I just wanted to make that clarification. So I hope that's helpful for somebody. Yes, I have a question. Okay. Go ahead, where are you from? My name is Paul from Cardiff. All right, nice to meet you, Paul. Go ahead. Uh, yes, my brother. Um, I just went, this is my first time, so I went to your website and um, I, I saw the residential programs. So I was just thinking, given that this lockdown is going to continue for quite some time without any clear, um, are you looking at developing a strategy where the residential programs 
be actually online programs and um, given um, the constraint and the challenges. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Edgar, um, I think um, Lucille is online and perhaps you may want to okay, you know, yeah, fine. Lucille, get like Lucille to, to speak to that. Oh, hi, hi everybody. Hi, um, I didn't realize the gentleman was referring to um, our residential programs. Now, um, when we had the first lockdown from the 23rd of March, we were completely locked down. We didn't do any residential programs at all. However, when the, some of the restrictions were lifted in July, we were able to put on residential programs because we were following the government guidelines and in that we're dealing with lifestyle health conditions. So we were able to run the programs. So at the moment, we've got this national lockdown and again, everything has shut down. Um, we have got programs planned, they're planned from March. So our first program for this year, 2021, is from the 7th to the 17th of March. And we're hoping by that time that again, the government will relax the restrictions so that we can continue to support those people with long-term health conditions and lifestyle conditions. So I hope that answers the gentleman's question. Um, could I just elaborate there, Lucy? Thank you very much. Um, I think um, I just want to push the point. It, it's clear. I mean, I, I've been living in Nigeria for the last 28 years. I only came back to the UK because of this COVID-19 and Nigeria didn't really have a strong strategy. And one of the things I quickly learned is that the British government neither has a firm strategy, even track and trace, and even understanding how behavioral change works when it comes to dealing with pandemic or pandemic, whatever your take is. My point is I'm trying to impress upon you that um, you should consider the fact that on the assumptions that you've made, that this may not play out. And therefore, um, it would be um, fortuitous for you to consider changing the nature of residential programs, which is where you started. And everyone's going to be moving away from, let's say, the typical business model onto an online platform. And you can still, I guess, realize your revenue stream as a result of going on to an alternative platform. So. I was looking for an answer in that respect, but you actually came back to the point where you're deferring it until yeah, you feel that it will be necessary for government. And, 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 and I want to strongly suggest as somebody that has worked with government across different countries, that the strategy that you may be looking at, you may have to revisit. Um, and uh, I would look forward to that. You don't have to respond. Um, I would look forward to that in the future, if that would be the case. Because I can tell you, I, I, I am, when I came back with my wife, my wife is Nigerian, I'm Jamaican. And uh, the first thing I decided to do was to open a shop. And I open a shop. And as I'm speaking now, the shop is not open because it's the Sabbath. So a lot of people are sometimes wondering, why don't you open on Saturday? So, and I use the shop as a basis for Whole Foods. And I utilize the shop to reach out to people um, from a health perspective. So uh, that's where I'm coming from because I know that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cla Clarence, um, for your contribution there. Um, there is a, another hand. Is it uh, Okona? Would you like to unmute and say your question? Yes, no, it wasn't going to be a question. Hi, everyone. Just tell me where um, you're coming from first as well. I'm from South Africa. Okay, go ahead. In Pretoria, yeah. All right, thank you. So I just wanted to point out, um, someone mentioned that they don't juice um, fruits and vegetables. Maybe it might be a good idea to um, have a program where we actually talk in depth about food combining. Because I've also mentioned in the chat that we must remember that in food combining, there is excellent, um, fair and poor. So there are some fruits and vegetables that can be combined 
and some that are very poor to be combined. So instead of just throwing out the baby with the with the bath water, um, maybe it would be a good idea to um, have have a program where we talk about food combining, what are the benefits of it, so that people don't just stop combining things and they don't know why they're not combining them, some they are combining and all of that thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that uh, mm -hmm. suggestion. Um, I've got another hand, which is Joyce. Uh, would you like to say where you're from and unmute Joyce? Well, hello, I'm Joyce from uh, UK, London. Um, okay, hi Joyce. Hi, it's about the same subject about juicing fruit and veg. Um, I juice greens for the last year and because things like kale and broccoli and maybe Brussels sprout, all those ones can be very bitter to take in. I usually put in like green apples or kiwi and that's it. I mean, I don't put anything more than that in there just to make the taste a little bit pleasant. And so when the gentleman said that you can't mix fruit and veg, I panicked away. I'm thinking, gosh, how am I going to be able to drink this? Because it's very difficult to drink things like kale, as you all know, is very, very bitter. So I'm glad someone quickly came on there and said, um, I mean, put clarifications there that once you're juicing, it's different from when you're doing smoothies. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, thank you, guys. Yeah, Joyce, um, just to, um, like, remember what I said? I said, me, this is my personal choice, remember? I, I didn't say this is law, this is principle. Um, so I know some people say you can juice, um, you can juice them together. There's no issue. Like I said, I personally have not seen that. I haven't seen the science behind that. I've, I've not seen that personally. And so I don't do that. Right. But neither am I saying for you to go and um, do what I do. I do what works for me. Like say mm -hmm. I don't personally, because I'm not sure about it as yet. I don't. I don't um, say juice like kale and apple, for example, for example. So obviously, and at the same time. Um, also juicing those green vegetables juices you i guess you're juicing for for health and for strength etc so yeah. it's about um we do need to have probably um a more discussion of food combinations and how, <laughs> yeah, that's and very how helpful, that impacts yeah. juicing like i say because what i'm saying is not law and and, and it might not say writing it's entirely it's, it's entirety so um Let's say, yeah, we all do our research and it's something to, to keep further researching. And like I said, this is just my personal opinion. So I don't want to undertake it for gospel. I'd just like to say, Lewis, on that note, that um, oftentimes the reason why people may put an apple or so inside a green juice is for sweetness. And um, what I would suggest that um, if you do whichever side of the argument you want to go on, you can also use carrots because carrots are very sweet. So you can use carrots to sweeten your, um, your, your, your green juice or you can use beetroot, which is also sweet. So whichever side, you, you know, whichever take you want to do, you can apply those and it will help. Jonathan, have you got any, um, anybody in the chat that's um, asking a question? How can I get the five a day plan um, that was posted in the um, group? I think if you scroll scroll up further up the chat, you'll be able to find that. that that's a question. Um, you muted yourself. I'm just trying to see because um, there's a lot of question in there, and it's just kind of hard to scroll. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I'll I'll go to your hand. But if you can have a look and see if there's anything there. So Brent, your hand is up. Is there something you wanted to say? Uh, yes, thanks, uh, Edgar. Um, yeah, no yeah, just, just to add to um, what Lewis said with regards to it, his personal preference and with regards to the, the food groups and combination of foods, um, if uh, it's ever you know, discussed in, in more detail, then with regards to um, personal preferences, I don't know um, if the audience or you guys are familiar with the Eat Fit for Your Blood group. And uh, depending on your, your blood type, that certain foods could either be beneficial, so you could eat those, those food groups or those types of foods every day. Um, either it's neutral, that you can have it, say, every third day, or 
uh, you must avoid. So you need to avoid those those food groups or those types of foods because they actually don't agree with your blood type. So yeah, that could be another one to look at when you're looking at that uh, study on the uh, different food groups. All right, thank you, Brent. Edgar, there's a lot of activity going on in the chat. <laughs> I, can, I think, I I think most, most of them is being covered. Uh, I think okay. the thing that people are asking about, how can they get the um, five days plan? But okay. um, I'd just like to say, we will be able to, we, got, we are going to put it in the, um, on the TTI chat. So um, the WhatsApp group. Some also, time. guys, I'd just like to let you all know that we do have uh, the TTI um, telegrams which we are putting the, the link in the, um, in the chat. Would so if, you... any, if anyone want to join us and to get additional information and encouragement during the week, you are more than happy if you're joining us for the first time, we are more than happy for you to join the Telegram group, which we'll be putting that in the chat shortly. Jonathan, would you like to just explain a bit more about the Telegram? I don't know that much about it, but I know you're an expert. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't consider myself as an expert. I'm still learning about Telegram, but um, the Telegram is a is an app similar to um to the WhatsApp. It's much easier to manage um, as um, a lot of people post a lot of things. Um, we can um, manage it as admin a lot better. So um, currently we have four WhatsApp group. Um, and we are trying to uh, move over to Telegram. However, we are not asking everybody to abandon the, um, the WhatsApp group now and move over to Telegram. But as we put the, um, the link out, we are asking if you, you, know, you download the app just as you download WhatsApp and join it. And you can click on the link and join TTI International. We are, it, 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 so go ahead. Go on. No, I'm saying it would be it's much easier for us to manage um, that on Telegram than on WhatsApp. And are you saying that the Telegram is up and running right now? It's up and running. And um, the women group, we ha already have people joining that. It's for the first time we're going to put the men's group in the chat though. Okay. And, and, what, and what kind of quantity of people can we have in, in Telegram? So this is a, a good thing as well. Um, on Telegram, we are allowed to have up to 22,000 people. Whereas on WhatsApp, we only can take um, what 250, 259, somewhere about there. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of a no brainer to kind of move over to, um, to um, Telegram. And, and, and I believe that the link is in the chat. Um, it should be there any moment now. Okay. Um, all right, excellent. excellent. Um, just remember also that we have a website that you can go to. If somebody could put that um, in the link as well, um, there'll be various things on the website. We're trying to uh, update that as much as possible. Um, is there any more questions uh, for the Temperance presentation? Edgar, I've got, I've got one. Um, I see one go question ahead. regarding vinegar. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, it's a quick yeah. So I know a lot of doctors and a lot of people say vinegar is good, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, vinegar is good when when it's based on the outside of the body. Okay. And and the reason why I say that because remember, obviously the manual that we're using, we're using um the manual the sense of vinegar, what it does, um a tendency that it can dehydrate the cells of the body and also it's very and it can have a very acidic effect upon the body as well. Okay. Which is two things that you don't want to do. So that's why I avoid vinegar, to ingesting vinegar in, into your food. Yeah. The, there, Lewis, is it apple sour vinegar you're referring to, or is it just a normal vinegar? Just vinegar, apple cider and normal vinegar. Okay, either. Eh? That's the same, yeah, has the same effect upon the body, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else that has a burning desire to grill Lewis? On his presentation, there's a hand, Edgar. Uh, natural, natural mind. Um, All right. Uh, where, where, where's that? It's natural, natural mind. Okay. Okay. Would you like to? Hi. Yeah. 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 Richard? yeah. Oh. Yeah, Richard. There. Um, yeah. Just, just to highlight two things. 
Apple. Apple contains malic acid and pectin, and that's good for buffering and it's good for them for help balancing the pH in juicing. Mm-hmm. Also, when you're juicing, you do need to remember that green juicing um, produce oxalates. Okay. And in order to um, to rid the body of those oxalates, you need to take remedial action by including um, enough calcium rich food in your diet. Okay, so I just, I forgot to add that beforehand because a lot of people just bang on with green juicing and they green juice everything green and leafy, which is good. But remember temperance as, a, as what the talk is about and moderation. So sometimes when you're green juicing, um, temperance would be, or moderation would be adding some water with the green juicing sometimes to kind of um, mix it down. And remember nine pounds of green juice gives your body a complete total blood um, blood transfusion okay so if there's anybody that's got any doubt about um, cleaning your blood nine pounds of green juice in is it nine or 16 nine pounds of green juice in clean your blood so i just wanted to say i just wanted to um to put that out there so that at least somebody might benefit from it okay thank you thank you richard i'm just, I'm just leaving the room but i'm not going so i'm just going to close the tablet to my family yeah don't don't, don't go we might don't go we might need you that's good okay i'll be back in a little while no problem. Is there any more questions, uh, comments for the speaker? Um, could I ask you, Lewis? There's, there's Pamela, Edgar. Pamela, uh, where, whereabouts are you from? And, uh, hi, I'm from Cardiff. Hi, hi Pamela, go ahead. Hi. I just wanted to add uh, the brother who said about vinegar. So I know that uh, what he said as well, that a lot of people think vinegar is good for you, but it's good to use on the outside. Uh, okay. Even when you have gout and stuff, you can soak your feet in uh, vinegar. But uh, the the main thing that you can't use your vinegar on the body, it, uh, it changes your stomach lining. So it disturbs the balance of your stomach lining and okay. it affects your blood uh, in terms of the viscosity of the blood. So your blood is a, is a certain it's not that thick. It's thick, but it's not that thick. But vinegar affects that thickness and it affects the movement of the blood throughout your vessels. So if if it affects that, then if you're trying to absorb something, it will affect the rate that nutrients are absorbed in your in your blood, in your body. And also it affects it affects how your blood clots. So if you're eating vinegar or you're you, you likely eat a lot of vinegar. It actually affects the rate at which your blood clots. So if you're in an accident or something, or you cut yourself or something, it will affect how much, how, how how quickly your blood clots. So people should be mindful of that. Of that. So regardless, whatever kind of vinegar you 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 take, it, it still affects. It affects your blood at a cellular level, and your stomach lining at a cellular level. Thank you. Thank you for that, Pamela. Um, do we have another question or comment? Yes, Edgar, we've got, um, we've got a question in the chat uh, regarding baking soda okay. um, in, in using baking soda for cake. And we also have um, Louise, a hand. So, so, so we'll take the baking soda first. Um, okay. What, what is the same baking soda? What about it? Jensen. Can you recommend an alternative? Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> we said for one for a while. I don't, I don't think we, that's that's only um, you can say annoying. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Um, but yeah, so baking sodas is annoying because there's in so many things. So you have to really watch out for that one. And so you have, to, and I can say um, once again, the science in it is a bit on both sides. So. Um, I have not found the alternative personally that will raise the cake like baking soda woods. I was a baking soda does a wonderful job when it comes to cake and stuff like that, but I haven't found anything naturally that's el- that's healthy as well that would do that. But Lewis, again, baking soda is a bit like um, vinegar, it's very good on the outside of the body, but not so well on the inside. Lewis, I'm sure yeah. we've got plenty of chef online, so they probably yeah we got we got quite a few people that can cook because we got. We got yeah, we got um, we got um, what's his name? Alvin, Alvin, and Louise. Are, are they there? And we got actually got Plantesi as well. These guys can probably advise you guys more uh, on those side of things. 
So, can, I, um, can I say something? Yes, go ahead. Uh, this is Audrey. Uh, I believe the issue with a baking soda is, is that the normal baking soda has got aluminium in it. And we know that aluminium is associated with, with Alzheimer's disease. However, if you go to um, health shops, you can find a baking soda that does not have aluminium in it. It's aluminium free. I don't know if that is the case, but I suspect that's what uh, the question is about. Okay, um, I'm not sure. Um, because obviously, because I rose the, the awareness that it's not the aluminium I'm, I'm concerned about. Because yeah, that's, okay. that's that was one of the major issues in a lot of early baking soda, the, the aluminium. Um, okay. But no, but I was just, I was um, expressing that baking soda has, um, has a very alkaline effect upon you, upon the body. Like you can alkalize your blood completely by soaking yourself in, in baking soda, wrapping yourself up in sheets that are soaked in baking soda. So it's, I know um, there's people that use baking soda to alkalize their bloods um, from the outside. So it's very strong, the baking soda, how, how, how it reacts in the body. And so when you um, eat cakes and pastries and stuff with baking soda inside of it, and what, and what can happen inside the stomach, because it's because your stomach is so acidic, well, it can interfere with the acidity of the stomach, which is used to break down pathogens, viruses, and also to break the food down. So if you intake a lot of these things, um, a lot of baking soda, it can almost neutralize, almost neutralize the acid um, effect of the stomach, which is needed for you to have adequate digestion. Thank you, Louis. Can we take um, Louis' question, please? Hi, guys. Um, you, Louise, you're a bit, your mic's a bit low. Can you go close to your microphone? Okay, sorry. Can you hear me now? Just about, yes. It's still a bit low, but go ahead. Um, I wanted to add, uh, make a point about the, um, the baking soda thing. I'm presuming that people are asking about the baking soda because they want it to raise cakes and stuff. Is that, is, am I correct in that thinking? Correct. Okay, so um, my uh, daughter, one of my, uh, Danike, um, she loves baking. And one of the things that she uses and has used in a, in a baking, in terms of trying to get her cakes to rise a bit better, <laughs> is apple juice. And she also uses flaxseed. And that gives um, the, the, um, the cake or whatever she's baking, a better rise and um, it's not um we don't always get it as high as we may think it should be yeah um but we, it gives it a better rise and also it gives it that more fluffier it gives it that more fluffier um kind of feeling instead of this kind of more solidy rock type of kind of feeling that you don't have so that was just two points from me i'm still investigating this raising agent thing because um you know, I'm used to baking old style and uh, I don't do any baking anymore. Well, <clears throat> I don't have the time, but I think maybe if people maybe tried that um, and see what happens, maybe they can co come back and um, tell us if it, if it worked for them as well. Louise, you know, you say um, the flaxseed, are you talking about it whole or ground? Uh, I'm gonna. I'd have to check with her, but I think it's more of the ground, ground in the grounded form, um, because um, as I said, I would have to double check with her with it's Yeah, ground. yeah, sure. Well, you can come. You can come back to us, but yeah, also the, the apple form. juice. The apple juice. What quantity of apple juice? I'd have to speak with her again, but it was right. just like, she started just trialing these things, like sure. and then she trials it, and then it, she just has a go at it. She's she's very experimental. Sure, sure. Maybe you can come back to us. Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, the, sorry, there's Jen who just said flaxseed should always be ground. And this is true. So then that answers the question to be very All honest. Right. Um, okay. Because, of course, you need it to be broken down in, in terms of digestion. Yes. Okay. Um, so that answers that question for us. It should be ground. Thank you for that reminder, Jen. Thank you very much. All right. Edgar, um, can we... Okay, Sorry, can, we take, can we take Sharon and then um, Dion, please? Okay, Sharon. Hello. Good, good evening, everybody. Um, two things, really. First of all, 
with regards to Telegram, we are posting the link there, but it is an app that you're going to need to download on your phones. I don't know if Jonathan said that, but yeah, so you do need to download Telegram and then you'll be able to access the um, different groups. And secondly, um, with regards to vinegar, thank you everyone. All your information has been brilliant. Really, really good. Learned a lot, especially um, your presentation was fantastic. Um, with regards to vinegar, um, we also need to remember that there's lots of things that contain vinegar. So we need to be careful. A lot of these condiments that we're supposed to be getting away from, but some find it very difficult. Um, you know, whether it's your tomato ketchup or whatever, a lot, you can make your own, tom your own tomato sauce, fine. But a lot of the um, shop bought ones that are on the shelf will have your vinegar in it. So be mindful that other ingredients, other, other things that you buy could contain vinegar. Even some of the breads that we eat, mm. some shop bought breads, they have vinegar in. Yeah, there's that's, a lot of breads with vinegar in it. Thank you, Sharon, for that. Um, yeah, um, I should have emphasised that. A lot of like um, a lot we is we have to start reading our ingredients. You know, when we go shopping, and like, we have to look at the back of the ingredients and just read like what ingredients are inside these things. And it's important that we read the labels. A lot of us don't read labels. Um, it can be a bit tedious, but it's worth it. I say many things have um, vinegar and baking soda and other um, harmful chemicals that can um, affect the quality of fuel that you put in your body. So. Just be mindful of labels and also get to know the terms because they use a lot of terms that you may not understand with the names but it's good to understand the terms on the labels as well it's important okay. uh, do you have Dion, please Dion? yeah um two questions really um first of all with regards to the baking soda is it that we're, we're saying that we shouldn't take baking soda internally at all number one and number two I use um, gluten-free and aluminium-free baking powder. Is that a no-no as well? Um, yeah, so what um, we're promoting is that, yeah, um, avoid baking soda internally if you can, baking soda, because um, the effect, once again, affects it as on the body and the digestion. Um, also, I'm not, the gluten-free, the aluminium-free, um, like, when things are free from other things, you also have to um, consider like what what do they put in to replace. So I guess you have to check the labels and see exactly what else have they put in to replace those things that they, they, they're taking out. For example, okay. like gluten free bread is good for some people, but in the long run, if you're not gluten intolerant, I won't eat gluten free bread in the long run. Mm. For example. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Is there, is there any more questions? Has anybody got a desire to ask a question? Uh, now is your opportunity. Ready to set the challenge? Yes, I was just going to say that, Lewis, um, if there's no more questions. However, I can see Q that he wants to ask or contribute. So we can take Q, Edgar, and then after that, we just set the challenge for next week. That's funny. Hi everyone, um, happy Sabbath out there. I, I just wanted to say, um, yeah, with the baking soda, remember uh, mainly it's, it's uh, uh, yeah, most of it's going to be calcium carbonate. And so your problem might not just be the aluminum, but the fact that it's, 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 it's a whole lot of calcium. Calcium has an alkalinizing effect on the body. And so as, as Lewis is saying, once you get to the stomach, you don't want that you don't want neutrality or an alkaline condition. What you want is an acidic condition and that calcium is going to be working counter to that. So the fact that you might have it aluminum free or other whatever free still doesn't make it any safer. Thank you, Q. Thank you, Q. Q, you actually just remind me of something what I should have said um, regarding with calcium, right? Calcium, it, the body uses calcium to neutralize. When your body becomes too acidic, the body will take calcium from the bones itself to neutralize the acidity inside your body. So calcium is, is one of the most new, most alkaline substances that your body can actually use. So once again, it's in baking soda. That's why I have that, that dangerous effect upon digestion in the stomach. Right, okay, should we uh, set the challenge now? <clears throat> Hello. Go ahead, Lewis. Hi. Right, um, 
Oh dear. As we go, I can see Dion. Yeah. yeah, quick question. Sorry, Dion. Someone, yeah. someone put in the chat, can we use egg replacer in our baking of cakes? Is that any good? Um, can some answer? I'm not sure. I don't, I personally, I don't bake at all, so I will not be <laughs> advising you with the, with the egg replacer. I know people use it, it seems to be very good, um, with other things, but I'm not sure in baking. I'm not sure if, if anyone, anyone else can I know, I know that, um, some of them do have, um, it still has baking powder in really. it. Um, this, the, oh, okay. you need to, you need to look at your labels. Okay, cool. A lot of times. That's the problem. We, we don't look at the labels, we just buy it. And, and if, we, if we looked at the labels, we probably would say, okay, maybe I actually need to put it back and not, not, not use it. So that's the suggestion. Read your labels well, because it, it will make a big difference. Well, well, Linda here does some baking. Um, she has a suggestion. Ah, cool, um, Linda. So, hi, everyone. Um, what I usually do for baking, especially when there's a need for an egg, I found um, an a uh, flax seed egg works really well um, in all the baking that I do. Yes, yeah, so you take your your ground flax seed, or I think another name that they use for it is linseed. So your flax okay. seeds, but ground up. Um, to make one flax egg, you'll take um, one tablespoon of flax seed to three tablespoons of water. You mix that together, leave it to sit for about five minutes. It becomes gooey and that actually helps to do a binding um, substance for when you are baking. Um, other people prefer to use a chia seed egg. You can also make an egg replacer out of chia seed. I personally haven't tried that because um, well, I've tasted it before and I haven't really liked the taste of the chia seed egg in, in baked products. I usually always use flex, um, a flex seed egg for, for my baking, whether, I don't know, whether I'm doing, like this morning I used it for flapjacks or whether I'm doing cakes or biscuits, whatever. I'll usually use a, a flax seed egg and I found that that works well, even for when you're making fritters or patties, whatever you want to call them, or burgers. I'll use that as an egg replacer if the recipe requires an egg. So if the recipe requires two eggs, would you do that portion double then and just put that? That's what I do. Awesome. Yes. Cool. So like if it needs three, I'll do that thing three times to make three flax seed eggs. Thank you. Cool. You're welcome. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Um, Emmanuel here. Um, yes, go ahead, Emmanuel. Where, where are you from? This is a non-food question. Yeah, where are you from? Um, I'm, I'm calling, I'm in London. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, it's about the skin. Um, I noticed that there's a bump that came up on the front of my forehead. And it's very hard. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what is it, what it is, or what can I put on there to to have it reduce. I mean, if anyone knows anything about um, the skin. Lewis, are you able to help or do you think he needs to have a consultation or something? I think um, we can help Edgar, but yeah. I think it would be wise if you do a consultation with us um emmanuel yeah I agree. So, emmanuel if you put your your information in the chat um, okay as a direct message so that uh true temperance then somebody will somebody will take your number and we'll get back to you beautiful all right thank you thank you lewis do you want to set the challenge You're, you're on mute, Louis. Yes, that's set the challenge. I'll share my screen now. So the challenge, your challenge. I want to apply the 10 eating principles for 21 days. And use my 21 days um, because it takes about 21 days to 30 days to form a new habit. So I want, I want this to become a habit for you. 
So you can apply the 10 eating principles for 21 days and also remove and replace at least one of the intemperate foods from your diet for 21 days. So, so the, the, the 10 challenges, I will I'll repost them inside the groups because you may get the, the principles. I'll repost them in, in the groups. Um, so the 10 eating principles, as in eating only two to three meals a day, not eating the drinking, drinking about an hour, two hours after a meal, etc. So they're the the, the 10 principles of eating and remove one of those, um, one of the foods, so as in caffeine, vinegar products, baking soda products, um, cheese, etc. Remove one of those food groups or fast foods, etc. from your diet for 21 days and incorporate instead something healthy or healthy alternative from the, um, from the temperate pyramid. So add, um, so if you eat, for example, love eating your chocolate, remove that for 21 days and instead put, put in um, carrots instead, or put in kale instead, or put in something healthier instead. For 21 days, and yeah, if you like it, you can keep on. That's how you start that that gentle step. So that's the challenge. That's the challenge. And also, if anyone wants to um, to do further study, obviously with a spiritual connection with um, temperance and the importance of the mind and diet connection. My number is there, so you can directly contact me or you can email, email us at TTI International. Lewis, in contact. Lewis um, yeah. just before you stop sharing, um, yeah. someone is asking um, if you would be able to repost, um, share the, um, the pyramid, the intemperance pyramid and also the other pyramid. The, the intemperance print is just an example. I'll, I will share, I'll show you the my intemperance page. So. These are the food of intemperance, yeah. And this, if you can remove one of these products from your diet for 21 days, it'd be very, be very, very beneficial, and to form a new habit. So, um, so when it comes to all, obviously everything, so they're the 14 foods that I've got there. So the, the pyramid is just um, a general pyramid. That's not all the foods. So I'll show you this. So you have an example. Remove one of these for 21 days. And see how you feel. If you like it, then you go, then you keep doing it. And before you know it, you can be a very, very, a very temperate person. So, can we have the other pyramid, please? Um, yeah. the, so the, this is yeah. the micro green. So, so it's probably best to, yeah, take a uh, screenshot or try to add one of these fruits and vegetables. And you. And you will find one some, out of every food group you'll find one food that you actually will like so i know a lot of some people don't like fruit you'll find a fruit that you like just just dig deep just just be um be open-minded thank you very much lewis um would you be able to stop sharing okay no problem we're still on What about his last, uh, his last screen? Can you put the last uh, slide you had? So the slide, so yeah. So if anyone wants yep. any further yeah, study on you. diet and the mind connection, you can contact you. me or contact us in the email and one of us will get in touch. And these are, these are for one-to-one or -one small group um, studies that we can do just to um, yeah, bring this point home more fully. Thank you. If you feel the need for that. Right, I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you very much, um, Lewis. I hope we all would be able to um, take up the challenge going forward for the next 21 days. I know that some of us are at different levels in terms of temperance. But as we can see, it's for everyone, even the small baby. <laughs> and it doesn't matter where we are. Um, we've got two further hand in the chat. We've got Louise. I think she may want to come back in on something. And we have Beauty. Hi, uh, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, this question is really, um, I, I think Louise can maybe clear this up for us because We've been talking about calcium and how, you know, calcium sounds like it's a really bad thing. Um, 
um, and I don't want people to misconstrue <clears throat> the fact of good calcium and bad calcium, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, because calcium, um, a calcium rich diet in terms of like nuts, leafy um, greens and so forth, we have to remember that it helps to build and protect our bones. So calcium is a really necessary mineral that is needed um, in terms of everyday um, living because it keeps our bone building, it keeps um, them healthy. And calcium also enables our blood to clot, our muscle to contract and our heart to beat. So could we just just be really clear, Lewis, um, I'm not saying you wasn't because maybe I've, I've missed this. Um, could we just be really clear on the fact that, or could you be really clear to the, um, your viewers that calcium in its right proportion and from the right sources is a healthy thing and it's something that is needed on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of our diet? Thank you, Louise. Yeah, so, yeah, we're not saying um, calcium products or calcium is anything that's bad for you. It's not. Um, like I said, we all need calcium for, um, like what Louise highlighted, um, for our bones and our muscles, etc. cetera. So um, calcium is needed, but like I say, but um, every substance is needed in different parts of the body, some more, some less. For example, um, because calcium is, is practically the, um, the most um, alkaline substance that the body uses to to keep the balance of the pH when it's, it, it goes over the above um, acidity. So what it does, it will leach that um, example, um, it will leach calcium from the bones to to harmonize the balance of your pH in the blood once again. So that's so calcium used in many ways. For example, like when you use um, a lot of dairy products, for example, that creates a very acidic environment in the body. And the body would then, if you're, if you're not intaking the right amount of example, green leafy vegetables that will help to them um, keep that balance. Again, what happens is that your body will have to use alternative sources. So the storage is way most of your calcium is stored in the bones. That's why we say, that's what adverts say, you drink your milk, you have strong bones, you have white teeth, etc. And that is true to some degree, but like I say, um, um, so when we're not having adequate amount of calcium through eating the right foods and the best source of calcium is from the green the dark green green leaves and also some seeds like like black sesame seed it's very high in calcium so and it's a, and your body conserves that much easier than you can observe for example calcium from milk for example because the process of milk um because that milk protein is much more tougher for, you, for the body to break down because it's made for a baby because it made to turn a baby cow into an adult cow basically right I would say cows, the size difference make a big difference with the um, the complication of the structure of the calcium that our body can take. So that's why our breast milk is much more um, easier for um, a child, a baby, to observe the calcium from the breast milk rather than from you drinking a cow. You see, like, when you give a child full-fat cow's milk, yeah, that that baby will become fat very quickly, super fat, very quick, on a lot of weight very quickly because that milk, and the calcium and the nutrition inside that, that milk is made to, to, to form a, a calf into an adult sized cow, right? So that's, so understanding um, the sources of calcium is, is important, but more importantly is the, the like why is the body, like the, the, the use of, of calcium. For example, the stomach does not need calcium in that way to function, to break down food, for example. So when we put um, food containing, um, Example substance like baking soda, which contain a lot of calcium, that 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 gets activated when you ingest it. Then what it does, it will hinder the breakdown of food, because the stomach is acidic and calcium naturally fights against acidity because it's it's a highly alkaline substance. So just to clear that up, so it's not saying that calcium is, is not good for you. It is good for you, but like I say, just knowing when and how to take it is important as well. Yeah, okay. Louis, thank you. That, that really does speak to temperance and to the pyramid that you showed us, that is the leafy greens right at the bottom. They're a good source of, of, of they're good alkanizing sort of uh, food. Because remember, it's temperance. We're trying to make uh, medicine our food and our food our medicine so that we heal rather through our diet than having to have uh, interventions that are concentrated. Um, Another good source of, of, of alkalinity in the body to regulate acidity is almond nuts. They're really, really a good source of, of if you want to really have some good um, uh, neutralizing of acidity in the body. So rightly so, Louise, 
calcium is not necessarily bad for the body, but the source of the calcium. The problem is when in our diet, we don't have it, then the body has to extract that from our bones as calcium phosphate. And what's that going to do? That's going to give us osteoporotic uh, conditions in the bones and things like that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Q and Lewis, for addressing those issues. There was just one other thing I wanted to add. Um, you mentioned the word balance, Lewis, and that's um, that triggered a thought because temperance is a and, and fantastic ex, um, presentation on temperance in what we eat and drink. But we also need to remember that temperance isn't just about what you ingest. Temperance is, applies to every aspect of our life. So you could be intemperate in your time, spending too much time doing something, um, something good, but you're not balanced in what you're doing. You could be intemperate in your clothes, with your money, even intemperate with your health, everything, whether it's intemperate with your partner, with intimacy, there's every aspect you can apply in temper um, temperance to. So remember that it's a balance of what is good and an abstinence what is not good yeah exactly sharon um so i said when this is just part one of this is basing on um the beginning of intemperance which starts with your plate and your diet and like so we took it from the very beginning so there's like i say there's um intemperance in everything what, what sharon said we haven't touched those as yet what we eat will impact all of those things as well so we may we have to do a part two and part three later on sometime dion did you have a question yeah, it's not really a question with regards to today's presentation, but as I remembered, I thought I'd better ask. Um, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he's on my screen. I can see him. He's next to you. Um, last week, he mentioned a book that we should buy about health and wellness. Um, I did ask, but Sharon wasn't sure which book I was talking about. Does he remember the book that he advertised last week that we need, we could buy? Yes, that's the one. How did he get that? <laughs> Jonathan, do you want to talk to that? You can come through to me directly, um, Dion, and I will be able to supply you the book. And how do I come through to you directly, sir? Um, do you, if you leave your um, information, then I can get I can give you a call or something. We can oh, talk. I'll share about it with you, Dion. I'll share it with you. I've, I remembered last night, but it was too late to call. It was intemperate for me to call you at that time. Of <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you all very much. That was it, really. Bless. <laughs> I think uh, we're kind of coming to the end of the show. Um, is there anything that you... I can see um, there, there is beauty. Is that... Oh, sorry. Okay, beauty, go ahead. I thought you were going to forget me there. <laughs> sorry, my apologies. No, it's okay. Right. Where are you from? Um, Where are you from? Sorry, I'm from Dudley. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, I'm not sure if this question's been covered because I missed a bit, but um, I just wanted to find out, are there any nuts that um, we should stay away from? Because I've heard some people say there's certain nuts that we shouldn't be eating. So I'm not sure if that is the case. If you've got an allergy to something, then obviously I can see that being an issue. I don't know um, what you think, Lewis. Um, also, Edgar, I think someone mentioned on a different platform um, that we were on, probably the way it's, you source your nuts, um, <clears throat> the way it's been grown. Um, some of it grown for, um, you know, commercial, and it's all about the money. So it, just the way it's, it's been processed and grown. Um, that's what I heard, you know, been mentioned. Yeah, it's what Jonathan said, yeah. Um, so it depends, like. Um, so, but, 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 but what? But what would be your recommendation? For what you've just said. Well, God's given us a variety of nuts. That's why God created a variety. Like, say, um, when it comes to nuts, like you don't have too much nuts any day. And nuts, so, um, nuts is one of the things they eat sparingly. Like probably a handful of nuts a day would be enough, not more than that. Um, okay. They have temperate eating and nuts, so you don't eat too many nuts as well. Because um, they're very fatty as well in itself. And like I know, I've I've not done too much research hard on peanuts, but I'm sure peanuts are not very they're not as healthy as you eat an almond nuts, for example. Yeah, from that's, how that's, that's my understanding. Yeah, so I'm not sure. So, 
I'm not sure about the peanuts itself. That's a bit questionable, but like I would say almond nuts are fine. Even cashew nuts could be potentially could be hybrids, but I'm not sure. That's I'm not sure. Can, can, you have to hear can research. I come in, can I come in there regarding the peanuts? Go ahead, Brent. Go ahead, Brent. Yeah, um, we all mentioned uh, the, the blood eat fit for your blood group. Um, I uh, when I came back from the UK in 2008, I developed H. pylori. So I was um, avoiding certain food groups that are acid uh, inducing and what have you. Um, and I was eating a lot of peanuts, um, especially in the afternoon when I was going to my team, I was on the road. Instead of having, having chips that are unhealthy, if I felt like snacking, you know, at that time in my life, I was eating peanuts. And, and I was getting extremely lethargic um, while I was eating these peanuts, normally driving my car and whatever, going out of my team. And I, I couldn't put my finger on it. And in the afternoon, I was getting very lethargic. And then I looked into this Eat Fit for Your Blood group. And one of the uh, food groups that I needed to avoid was, was peanuts. And it was like it turning a switch when I stopped eating the peanuts at that time of the day, my energy levels were fine. And... Uh, I went back to that list and, and that was actually a food group that I need to avoid was, was the peanuts. And that's one of the worst food groups that actually affects me um, and makes me lethargic was, was the peanut. Thanks you for that, Brent. Louise, uh, um, put your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was just going to say, um, I was just doing a little, sorry, I was just doing a little uh, research and it, it says that some of the one of the one of the things that I learned from a very early stage of the medical mission was peanuts was like one of the lower grades of um, of nuts, and at times it can uh, carry a lot of um, mold. It can carry a lot of mold, and um, they were saying that like things like uh, Brazil nuts, cashew nuts, uh, Macedonia nuts, those type of things. Um, almonds, walnuts, some of the other nuts that, um, that, um, that uh, oh, what's his name? The one who's doing the presenting, sorry. <laughs> Lewis. Lewis. Lewis, sorry. Yeah. I apologize, Lewis. It just went out of my head for a minute. Um, those nuts oh, carry, <laughs> those um, nuts carry good amounts of like iron, zinc, and magnesium, selenium, those type of things. So those type of nuts are like the higher grade nuts. But um, uh, peanuts are like one of the lower grade nuts. Okay. Edgar, um, just before okay. you take um, natural mind, um, I can see a lot of people um, um, making requests for the book. I'd just like to say the book, there is a cost to the book. Um, it's usually 70 pounds. However, what I did say last week, we are putting together another two books. So we'll be able to 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 um, provide them at a, um, a cost a cheaper cost. So as a package cost for the three books, which will okay. include which will include a, a recipe book. So um, there is a cost to it. So I don't know. I don't want anyone to misunderstand or to think that it's free. But there is a cost to to the book. Okay. So if you are interested, just. Just uh, send us a message, leave your number in the chat and, and somebody from the TTR team uh, will come back to you. Um, I did see a hand uh, somewhere. I think the hand has been lowered. So unless anybody's got any... Oh, nat There's na natural... There's natural natural mind. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to just confirm. I was going to say the same thing that my sister just said just now about the, the peanuts being the lowest grade of the nuts. Okay. Also, um, to avoid nuts that have been roasted already because you have quite a few stores around that sell pure nuts. Oh, natural, natural, nice. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I I don't know what happened there, but thank you for that comment. Um, All right, sorry, I was just going to say that basically avoid those nuts, nuts that have been radiated um, and seeds that have been radiated and also the nuts that um, have been roasted, they have had their enzymes damaged, so they are of no use to you if they have been roasted. 
because they don't watch the heat that they they roast it to 100 and I think it's 102 or 103 etc so you have to be careful get your nuts organic sometimes i one of my neighbors she's not a christian um she eats seeds but she goes to the pet shop to buy bird seeds and she uses the seeds that they that they use for birds because she says but basically that in the uk they you will go to prison for feeding birds um, radiated or poisoned or damaged nuts. So the purest seeds, nuts and seeds that she eats is the ones that would be fed to the to the um, to the to the animals. Because you know we're living in the UK and they're great animal lovers type thing. So sometimes the food that they should give to us, they poison and they cook and they cook down. The food that they should give to pets, they make sure that it's hundred percent organic and more healthier. So that's her take on it. I kind of agree with her to a degree. Um, but yeah, that's just a point to, to note. If it's radiated or roasted, it's no good to you. Okay, thank you very much for that. Interesting. Um, Louise, you got your hand up again? Oh, I'm sorry. Is that a mistake? I'm sorry, I didn't lower. I apologise. Okay, no, 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 no worries, no worries. Um, if, is there anybody else that has any questions? We, I know that we're actually fast coming to an end. Um, so if you do have a question, you need to move quickly. Um, yeah. Okay. I think we're almost at an end. Um, Jonathan, is there anything else that you would like to say or highlight? Um, not that I can think of, Edgar. Um, I know people are asking the name of the book. It's called The Natural Encyclopedia. Um, we'll put it in the chat um, if you want. I think also there's a um, PDF um, version that you can get online. Um, so, yes, you, you can get it online um, that way. Natural, natural Remedies Encyclopedia. Yeah. Okay. And there's various editions. I'm not sure what the latest edition is. It might be up to seven now. Yeah, seven is the latest. Seven is the latest, yeah. So if you're interested, if you want to put your details in the chat, uh, um, one of the admin will take your details and we'll come, come back to you if you're interested in the book. And I think we are just about at the end of the programme. We thank you very much for your time and your comments and your uh, counsels on on things that we can do better. Remember temperance is temperance in all things. It's not just food. As Lewis said, we probably will have to come back to this and do another session um, to incorporate more things with regard to temperance. Um, please remember we have a website. Uh, Jonathan mentioned about, um, what's it called again? Telegram. Telegram, if, you, if you're interested in Telegram, Again, um, drop us a line. Download the app, Edgar. Download yeah, you need to download the app and app. join the group. The you link is in the, the chat. That's right. And next week, what do we know? What what's next week, Jonathan? Huh? We'll our our presenter next week will be Joanna Daniel. Um, she's uh, she will be dealing with mental health. So okay. if you do know every, anyone that's suffering from mental health given this, these challenges um, time, then do invite them to come on the program. They will be benefited. Excellent. Okay, so that will be the next week's presenter. Just to say she's also a counsellor as, as, as far as I remember. Okay, so um, we the show is about finished. Um, so at this point, if you would like to yeah, if you would like to unmute and say hello to us, tell us where you're from, give us your comments on the program. If you liked what you heard today, um, you know, you comment. Just before, just before you go, Edgar, if you'd just like to um, say goodbye to our viewers and YouTube. Okay, yeah, we... we're going to stop um, streaming 10 seconds. So if you want to... Give a quick comment, do it now. And we thank you very much um, for listening. Please join us back 
next week, same time at three o'clock, uh, we will have another presenter. So all those on YouTube, we're going to say thank you and we'll see you next week. And we're going to go off air in one, two,